On this week's episode of Capital City Sports, the women's basketball team finds out its seed in the NCAA tournament. Softball plays one game at home against Minnesota, and the sand volleyball team debuts at USC. This is Capital City Sports. Hello everybody and welcome into this week's episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Jeremy Urso. This past Monday night, the USC women's basketball team held a viewing party to the public to find out who they would play against and where they would play in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Brett Williams was at Colonial Life Arena and we sent it to him for more information. Players, coaches, and fans came together at Colonial Life Arena on Selection Monday to see where South Carolina's women's basketball team would begin its journey to a national championship. The night began with everybody joining in a Gamecock tradition. And just as the official ceremony got underway, Cocky decided to have some fun with an SGTV camera. He got up close and personal with the players. I had Lisa. Look at Cocky. Look. Come to turn Hey, you about to put in work. Look what y'all let me do. So I can't rely on it. That's the net we wear on our shirts. Hey, we the game cut. We always do our thing. New model for the shit. We about to be the change. Early in the morning, late night, stay up on the grass. Until this happened. <laughs> Did that. Somebody's gonna lose a job. With our cameras and our jobs secure, it was time to honor the team for their season achievements. up the crowd with some fan favorites. Finally, ESPN selection show began, and everyone waited on the edge of their seat to see South Carolina appear on the bracket. Then came the announcement. were awarded the number one seed for the first time in program history and are headed off to Seattle for their first round matchup. Afterward, head coach Don Staley addressed the fans. Coach Staley and junior forward Elisa Welsh also spoke to the media about the number one seed. You know, coming with the, with the committee, you never know. You know, I think a perfect example of that with the men's tournament bracket, you know, you never know what to expect. So, you know, we saw that. And, you know, I think Tennessee definitely deserved it. You know, I think they definitely deserve a one seed, but you didn't know what to expect. So, you know, when, when it came up and we had the one seed, it's just 
made your heart drop. You know, it's just it's a great feeling to know our hard work has paid off. Putting yourself in the same breath as you know the Notre Dame's, the Yukons, and the Tennessees, and I think it's just a breath a breath of fresh air to have you know someone new and and be dis and, and someone that has done the body of work. And a lot of times they take they they go with tradition, and hopefully we're starting a tradition where you know we can we can t continue to be number one seeds. But that that's us taking care of our business during the season. The Gamecocks will play number 16, Cal State Northridge, in the round of 64 on March 23rd. Reporting from Colonial Life Arena, I'm Brett Williams, Capital City Sports. After winning two out of three games against Alabama, the USC softball team has an overall record of 17-11 with a 12-3 home record. This past Wednesday, they took on Minnesota in a one-game home series, and Pat Cloney has your highlight. The South Carolina softball team played host to the Minnesota Golden Gophers on Wednesday night. The Golden Gophers came into the game with a record of 21-3 and on the season. Here, they strut their stuff during opening warm-ups. Sarah Moulton brought her best stuff to the ballpark this evening. Here she strikes out Sarah Mooney of the Gamecocks. The teams combined for just four hits through six and no runs on the board. But that would change in the seventh when Sidney Fabian hits the soft liner off of Cody Yesky's glove. A run would score for the Gophers. It's one to nothing. A crushing blow to the dominant pitching of Julie Surratt, who allowed just one hit in the game. Trouble on the next play, too, as Sam Mackin hits the soft liner. But Cody Yesky makes a very nice play, colliding into the Gophers' runner, avoiding further damage. Unfortunately, the Gamecocks would not be able to tack on a run in the bottom of the seventh. They fall in this game one to nothing, falling to 17 and nine on the season. For Capital City Sports, this is Pat Cloney. This past Friday night, the USC women's sand volleyball team had its first ever home matchup against Oregon. Entering the game, the team was one game below 500. Once again, we send it to Pat Cloney for more information. The Gamecock Sand Volleyball team played its first ever home match Friday night at the Carolina Sand Volleyball Complex. The Gamecocks came in with a 2-4 record on the season, and they took on the Oregon Ducks. To see how they fared, let's take a look at the highlight. An impressive crowd was on hand for this inaugural match at the Sand Volleyball Complex. Over on court four, the Gamecocks had an impressive run during the second set. Here, Aaron Neufeld gets the block on the kill try by Oregon's Chelsea Ashen. Then later, it's Neuenfeldt with a nice placement in the back corner for the point. To court three now, where Michaela Christensen rips a spike at the Ducks, and Natalie Gonzalez can do nothing but defend herself. Later, Christensen with a nice touch into the Oregon backcourt. Here, she sets up Jade Vitt with the bump, and Vitt makes good use of it with the touch off the net. And one more time, here's Vitt with the ace off the net. Carolina would take the match on court three, but the most exciting match of the night took place on court two, We'll pick it up with a Jordan Loney spike in between two ducks for the point. Then here, it's Loney with the dig and teammate Shinna Ratner pokes the ball over the net. But Oregon would make this match close late. Casey Nady won't go down without a fight. She pulls off not one, but two kills in this highlight to keep her team in it. And with the score tied at 23, the Gamecocks would decide that enough is enough. Loney, no chance for the ducks. And a few points later, Shinna Ratner would send the fans home happy. She gets the point and jumps into her teammates' arms. South Carolina takes the match four sets to one. A big program victory in their first ever home match. The team gathers around in celebration. Then, it's off to mob coach Moritz Moritz. The ladies finish up the first day of the Gamecock Invitational at 1-0, and they'll head home to rest up for day two. The win improves the Gamecocks' record to 3-4 and four on the season. They'll play matches two and three of the Gamecock Invitational on Saturday. For Capital City Sports, I'm Pat Cloney. The team also had a doubleheader on Saturday. After defeating UAB earlier in the day, they played under the lights against LSU in the evening. John Daddy was there, and let's see if they could pull off a third straight victory. Day two of the Gamecock Invitational began with the Gamecocks defeating the UAB Blazers 3-2 in the afternoon game. The nightcap pitted the Gamecocks against the LSU Tigers. They look to move to 3-0 on the tournament. Let's check out the highlight to see how they did. The number one pair of Paige Wheeler and Megan Kent had struggles with the LSU squad of Megan Maneri and Katie Lindlow, dropping the first set 
and there would be no late second set comeback, giving the Tigers their first point of the match. The crowd was highly energetic as they watched the action on court four, where the Tigers won in straight sets 21-18 and 24-22. The second team of Michaela Christiansen and Sarah Blomgren topped the Tigers two team in three sets, cutting the lead to one. The number five team of Coco Atoa Williams and Aaron Neuenfeldt dominated in the first set, winning 21 to 14. The duo would come out strong in the second set, but would ultimately drop the next two, giving the Tigers a 3-1 lead and the overall victory. The number three team would split the first and second sets with LSU, but would drop the final set 16-14. And that's the final score from the Carolina Sand Volleyball Complex, LSU 4, Gamecocks 1. It wasn't a strong showing for the Gamecocks, but they'll look to rebound tomorrow afternoon against Louisiana Monroe in the finale of the Gamecock Invitational. From the Carolina Sand Volleyball Complex, I'm John Dowdy, Capital City Sports. That's going to be it for this week's episode of Capital City Sports. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at CCS on SGTV. From all of us here at Capital City Sports, thank you and make it a great week. And best of luck on all of your brackets.